Good morning and welcome to St. Clair's and I'd like to make a start by introducing our principal, Mr. Andrew Ratu. Good morning everybody, hello and welcome to our open event. Today we're delighted to be talking to a record number of people from Oxford, other parts of the UK, Europe and many other countries around the world. In fact, 33 nationalities are represented here today and that's not quite counting a number of dual nationalities as well, which is very St. Clair's. We want to tell you about St. Clair's, the IB Diploma and our pre-IB programme, and we hope to be able to answer any questions you might have about our amazing school. I'm Andy Ratu, the principal, and I just wanted to say a few words by way of introduction. We've been back to normal operations um, uh, since the beginning of uh, last term, and activities um, uh, have uh, resumed as normal. All our students are back in college. Um, everything's back in the swing and we're all delighted to be back to some degree of normality. We can finally see each other's faces again, which is really nice. Our infection control measures have been highly effective and everybody's been very cooperative. St. Clair's is unique. We were founded by an idealist, Anne Dreidel, nearly 70 years ago. Our mission remains the same, to advance international education and understanding. So we hope you'll want to join our very special international community. We have students from 45 countries and we teach literature in 25 different languages with real live native speaker teachers. If you come to us, you'll be joining a highly successful pioneering IB World School, the first school in England to teach the IB diploma uh, about uh, 45 years ago we started. Our average IB diploma score in 2021 was an astonishing 39 points out of a maximum of 45. This is way higher than the world average, which is in the low 30s, and places us in an elite group of schools worldwide. And many of the other schools in this elite group are very academically selective. We're proud that we achieve our results from cohorts with a much wider range of ability. So our value added is superb, and we really know what we're doing. Another USP of St. Clair's is that our careers and higher education advice and counselling is probably the best in the UK. Every year, our graduates go on to many of the top universities around the world. In the UK, a small number go to Oxford or Cambridge, but far larger numbers seek out the bright lights of London at LSE, UCL, Imperial and King's College. Quite a number of leavers go on to top American and Canadian colleges such as Harvard, Dartmouth, Berkeley or Toronto, and European universities like Maastricht, Amsterdam, Bocconi and IE University in Madrid, which teach their courses in English, are growing in popularity, as we'll hear from Mel later. Unlike many schools in the UK, we're strongly student focused in our outlook. Everything we do is designed to make the St. Clair student experience as good as it can possibly be. Our boarding and pastoral care are outstanding and the range of other activities like sport, music, drama and community service is superb. We welcome feedback about how we can improve too. I think it's probably been enough from me um, for the time being. Uh, I'll probably speak again later, but let's pass over to Al Summers, our Vice Principal Academic, to find out more about the IB Diploma and Pre-IB. If you've got any questions, please don't forget to put them in the Q&A function at the bottom of the screen. Thanks a lot. Over to Al, speak to you later. Um, thanks, Andy, and uh, a warm welcome from me today. Um, so I'd like to tell you a little bit more about our courses, and I'm going to start off with our flagship course, which is the IB Diploma Programme. Um, it's globally recognised, very, very um, highly regarded um, across the world, and it gives fantastic opportunities to our students when they finish at St. Clair's. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the structure of the IB Diploma because it's quite interesting. Um, and I must admit, uh, I'm, of course, paid to be enthusiastic about the IB Diploma, but actually having taught um, in the English system with A-levels, Scottish system with hires, and my own um, qualification being a European baccalaureate, um, I feel that the IB Diploma programme is the best overall package that I've ever come across in my teaching career. So I'd like to tell you a bit about it. Um, so um, it starts um, with the sort of central part of that diagram that was up on the screen at the moment called the wheel, uh, with the IB Learner Profile. Uh, this is a series of uh, 10 attributes, values, qualities that uh, we're looking to develop in our learners um, through the two years that they're with us for the diploma. Um, and it's things like being uh, thinkers, inquirers, um, but also other things like being caring, uh, being balanced. Um, and it, this, I think, is one of the rather unique features 
to the, of the IDB diploma. You're not just about learning um, things, not just about learning facts. It's also about developing those characteristics and values uh, that are going to prepare you for all the opportunities that are there um, in, in this globalized world that we live in. So the IB learner profile is a very important core to uh, the diploma. Um, sitting around the IB Learner Profile, we have the approaches to teaching and learning. Now, again, this is a, a, um, an unusual feature of the IB. If you did English A-levels, for example, uh, you do particular subjects, but there's not necessarily a sort of set of, of skills that you are um, you, you have to look to develop along the way. And these are built into the diploma programme as the approaches to learning. So we're explicitly looking to help our learners develop their thinking skills, thinking critically, thinking creatively. Um, we look to help develop communication skills. There are lots of presentation elements, for example, um, and uh, a number of assessed components, um, which are oral, as well as uh, more traditional uh, written exams. Uh, we help our students with their social collaborative skills. Uh, there's lots and lots of group work, uh, lots of things where our students work with each other to um, achieve sort of tangible outcomes, and uh, they develop uh, really uh, strong skills at working with others very important in school, but just as important at university and perhaps more important beyond it in the world of work. We also um, help our students to develop as self-managers, and that means uh, the ability to um, start taking over responsibility and ownership for their progress and learning. Uh, we support them on the way, uh, but they develop very good abilities to manage their workload, their timescales, lots of deadlines, uh, but they also get good at working out what the next stage is in their own personal development. And that's a very, very uh, powerful, important thing. Uh, Mel will no doubt talk about this more, but um, university admissions officers find IB diploma students conspicuously well prepared uh, for self-managing at university, which is really critical. Uh, and finally, we help our students develop their research skills. Um, this is incredibly important in this era of um, information and misinformation and learning to dissect out um, and, and to try and find things that are reliable and, and, and true from a factual perspective is a really, really important um, research skill that they develop here. Um, on the other side of our, our um, diagram there, we have the approaches to teaching. I don't want to spend too long on that. Much of it is just what I would describe as being good teaching. But I would just like to point out that the IB Diploma um, looks to develop students in, a, in both local and global contexts. And this is where St. Clair's uh, really has a, a fantastic resource. We have more than 40 nationalities here. So we can look at um, global issues uh, from lots of different perspectives. And that's incredibly value in, valuable in terms of uh, helping our students to develop and to broaden their minds. Moving on, um, outside the approaches to teaching and learning, we have what are called the core elements. Again, these are a unique feature of the IB Diploma. The first of these is the extended essay, which is exactly what it sounds. Um, our students choose a subject that they're interested in and they write a 4,000 word, uh, rigorously researched and academically styled essay. Um, it's a really, really good piece of work. Our students ask all sorts of interesting research questions. Um, they learn an awful lot um, through the process of, of, of research and of course they learn some re really valuable um, skills that, that, that go on from there such as the ability to reference and to cite correctly, uh, the ability to um, judge and evaluate the quality of sources, so it's a really great piece of work. The second um, component is TOK or Theory of Knowledge. Uh, this can be seen as a critical thinking course on the subject of what we know very different to what a lot of people will have experienced before. Um, because in many cases in, in school, you're very used to being told lots of things and told that they're factual. But this course asks, well, how do we know? So for example, when I say as a scientist, uh, you know, I, re I rely on things like the scientific method and uh, peer review, uh, and we, we, we build sort of falsifiable theories that we can be sort of tested. Um, do I mean the same as when someone's talking in the human sciences, looking at something like economics? or in the arts. And so it encourages our students to think across the disciplines and to think about what can and can't be known and how we can gain confidence about what we know. Again, it's a superb preparation for university. Um, university admissions officers really love um, the, the, the theory of knowledge components of IB and what it does to, to help our students along. And then finally, we have what we call CAS, Creativity Activity Service. Uh, this uh, can be seen as an extracurricular set of components, but unlike in other systems, they are built into the diploma. 
um, so that you, you can't actually pass your diploma without uh, doing your CAS programme. And it ensures that there's balance. Our students do active things like uh, lots of sports. Uh, they do creative things like debating, model United Nations, music and art. And they also provide service, in other words, benefit to others. So they, they, they play a role in a wider community. So that's, that's our, our, our core elements. Then uh, we finally get to the bit that people maybe start thinking about, which is the actual subjects. Uh, the IB uh, diploma is a broad course. Um, you take six subjects in the diploma compared to, for example, the normal three at A level. And they um, fall into different categories, uh, studies in language and literature, which might be seen as your, your first language, uh, language acquisition, which might be a second one, individuals and societies, which are humanities subjects, sciences, and then mathematics, and then finally the arts. You don't have to choose an arts subject, but many of our students like to. Um, there's an opportunity to choose a second one from another category if you, if you don't want to do an arts subject. And then finally, international mindedness. Um, although we sometimes you feel when you look at the news that everything to do with the, the globe is, is somehow a threat, there are also fantastic opportunities um, that have come about because we are able to move and to travel and to interact with people around the globe. And the IB diploma qualification is fit for the 21st century in the sense that it helps us to develop that international mindedness. And again, with our very, very broad community here from across the globe, we're very, very well prepared to deliver that international mindedness. In practical terms, your IB diploma consists of uh, three higher level sub subjects and three standard level subjects. The higher level subjects have a bit more teaching time and they tend to be the ones that you're more um, interested in or perhaps the subjects which might lead in a direction of a particular university course or career. Uh, the standard level subjects can be seen as a sort of supporting cast that keeps uh, you know, your, your skills developing across a whole range of, uh, of education. So your programme must consist of one subject from groups one to five, then an art subject or a second subject from one of the groups. In terms of how an IB diploma is scored, um, it is scored out of 45 points. Each subject, standard or high level, attracts up to seven points, which is 42. And then the core elements, the extended essay and the theory of knowledge are combined together to give another three points. And it does mean that there's a, a wide range of scores available. And for example, if you have a, a sort of bad day at the office in one exam, it's perhaps not quite as much of a, a, an issue as if you have a bad A-level exam and it takes down a grade in one of your only three subjects. It does provide some cushioning there. So I'd like to talk you through a little bit about the um, actual courses themselves. Uh, group one is studies in language and literature, um, your native language. Um, so we offer English literature and language and literature courses at higher and standard level, but we're also unique in offering literature in pretty much any other language that you can think of. So, for example, at the moment, I have students doing Japanese uh, literature. I have students doing Portuguese literature. I have students doing Bulgarian literature. It's a huge variety and it's very important because it allows our students to retain um, contact with the culture and literature of home. Group two is uh, language acquisition, which can be seen as second languages. Uh, we offer um, higher and standard level language B in English, Spanish, German, French, and Chinese. We also offer ab initio languages, which is an opportunity to try a new language that you haven't studied before and to develop it to a point where you, you, you reach a, a good level, both in uh, conversational and uh, written tasks. We offer ab initio in Chinese, Spanish, and German. But many of our students actually do two language A's they, and thereby get the bilingual diploma. Moving on, we have uh, group three, which is individuals and societies. Uh, these are our humanities subjects, including history, geography, business, psychology, economics, global politics, and one you may not have heard of, which is ESS, environmental systems and societies. Very contemporary subject, looking at sustainability, which is something that we all ought to be interested in. Um, Moving on to the sciences, you will see that the, the traditional sciences of physics, chemistry and biology are there, but we also have sports, exercise and health science, which is a really great focus course. Um, a lot of biological content, obviously, uh, with a sports focus, and it also dovetails really nicely with psychology. You'll notice the ESS features there as well. Uh, and ESS is a good uh, an interesting subject because it can count as both a group three and four subject. 
So for example, if you're someone who really loves the arts or languages, you can choose ESS as both your science and your humanity, and then that frees up two further choices. So you really can customize your diploma more than you might think. Group five is mathematics. Everyone does maths within the IB diploma, and I think that's a good thing. I think that 16 is very early to be giving up on, on, on mathematics, given how uh, mathematics is embedded in so many aspects of life. We have two different courses, analysis and approaches, uh, which might be seen as more pure maths uh, for the real enthusiasts. Um, and then we have applications and interpretations, which is more of an applied maths course. So for example, there's a greater emphasis on statistics and probability as these might be applied to, to, to real life situations. Uh, both are available at higher or stand level, which again is unusual. Many um, schools are only off, off, able to offer a proportion of the maths courses. Finally, we have the arts. Uh, many of our students enjoy doing uh, theater, visual arts or music as part of their program. Um, these, uh, these courses uh, do not have a final examination. They're entirely coursework based and they allow our students to build up really impressive portfolios of work uh, over their time with us. Um, I've worked in schools uh, where the IB has uh, existed alongside other systems, for example, A-level. And I spent quite a proportion of my career myth-busting the IB diploma. Uh, it's amazing what people believe they know about the diploma, and, and many of the beliefs are really uh, not true. So I'll, I'll just take you through a few of my favourites. Um, one of them is that IB is only for international students. Of course, it's great for international students, it, but it's great for all students. Why would you not want to open up um, a greater range of opportunities for yourself? And um, there's no doubt that the UK universities, they're very well aware of the IB diploma and its qualities um, and a, a number of a, a very heavy hitter UK schools um, offer IB diploma very successfully as well. So it's, it's categorically not just uh, for students from, uh, from overseas. I've also heard a lot that the IB is only for the most intellectually capable students. And while of course it is a superb intellectual challenge, it really is. Actually, um, we find that for some of our, our, our learners who perhaps aren't as strong, the structure within the course helps them to develop um, a, a sort of rhythm to their work and develop their skills as learners um, that helps them to be um, successful. And so there are coursework elements in every subject, and this allows you to work out things through the course rather than necessarily just depending on, on final exams. The result is that actually a range of learners can access the IB very, very successfully. I also hear that IB is harder work than A-levels. Um, IB students do work hard. They have six subjects, they have core elements, uh, and they do lots of other things. They do work hard. But quite frankly, if you're going to be successful, you need to work harder whichever educational system you, you, you go to. I think sometimes when people think that A-levels aren't hard work, it's because people don't get into a good working rhythm early enough. That's all very well, but it can lead to a pretty horrible second year when you realize that you haven't been working hard enough early enough. So yes, it is. I won't pretend IB isn't hard work, but it's good work as well. A lot of people worry about the keeping on of subjects. This is a particular thing in the UK where you get to narrow down to three. And they worry that keeping on subjects that either they don't like so much or not good at will drag them down. Again, our experience of that really, that it really isn't true. You're still developing strongly as a learner at this point. And you might be surprised that the things that you really enjoy um, when you do them in a different way. So for example, uh, the way that maths is done in the IB is really different to how it's done earlier. There's a lot more interest, a lot more application to real life. Also, for example, a lot of people say, oh, I, I don't find languages very easy and I don't want to carry on. But actually um, doing it within a small class environment uh, with a native speaker who can really sort of immerse you in both the culture as well as the language, you'd be amazed how people come on. And, and actually with a, a score out of 45, even if you don't hit a, a sort of six or a seven in one of your standard level subjects, that really doesn't cause much damage to your, your, your prospects. It doesn't pull you down. And in many ways it pulls you up. Finally, and I, 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 could, I could pass this one on to Mel, um, who deals with this all the time. IB is not a good preparation for, and then just insert course. I hear it's not good for engineering. I hear it's not good for medicine. I hear it's not good for art. Categorically not true, okay? Our students go on and do a huge range of things. And Mel will be able to illustrate just some of those things that our, our students go on to do. But it's, it's a myth that just keeps, keeps popping up again and again. And you mentioned our results. Um, and we're very proud of our results. Um, we're particularly proud of our results 
because we're not an academically highly selective school. Uh, we take a range of abilities. What we are looking for in our students is the right attitude. We want you to come in with that sort of can-do attitude, that desire to learn and to improve yourself. And that's why we're able to uh, generate results that stand up superbly well against um, other schools. We're highly ranked in, in, in various of, of the league tables, which in fact aren't um, particularly IB friendly in the way that they're constructed. But yet we still um, are very, very highly rated. I'd now like to move on and just talk a little bit about our pre-IB programme. Um, IB Diploma is taken in the last two years of school. Um, we also run a one-year preparatory IB course, uh, which provides a really excellent preparation for doing the IB Diploma programme. Partly, you experience really good IB-style learning through inquiry. You start developing those different approaches to learning, but you also get to try many of the subjects that will be in the diploma. Everyone studies English and maths, and you actually have the opportunity to sit IGCSEs in English and maths depending on the background that you have. You also get to try out um, tasters across um, three trimesters in the sciences, the humanities and the arts. And so you get a little look at what, what, what our IB diploma programmes are like, and you experience that style of learning and you, and you see whether that might suit you. You also get to play a full part in our CAS programme. So doing our pre-IB programme is a really great preparation for going on and then doing the diploma here. Um, what I would say is that um, in terms of our, our, our pre-IB, um, a lot of our students who've been through it have come through very strongly and done extremely well in their diplomas. It's also, um, let's say that you don't decide to carry on with the diploma, it's also just a really good general education um, ready for a, a high level course somewhere else. And as well as all the, the academic components I've already outlined, there's also a supervised study and weekend program that ensures our students get all sorts of uh, nice opportunities while they're here. I think that's probably enough from me. I'm going to hand over now to uh, Mel, who's our head of careers. Good morning or good afternoon, everyone, depending on where in the world you're joining us from. Uh, welcome. So I, I'm the Head of Careers here at St Clair's and I'm going to tell you a little bit about where our students go on to with the IB and the work that we do with them here. And the IB literally can take you anywhere. It's officially accepted in around 150 countries around the world and it is incredibly highly respected. In fact, in the USA, it's seen as the most rigorous curriculum you can do in preparation for university study and is often given some credits towards your degree for your higher level subject. And our students take advantage of this and really do go all around the world. In any one year, we're normally supporting applications to around 16 different countries. And as you can see, these are some of the um, places our students have gone to since 2014. And they really are some of the, the names you would recognise around the world from uh, UCLA and UC Berkeley in the US to Sydney in Australia to Bocconi in Italy to LSE and Oxford and Cambridge and King's and Edinburgh in the UK. And as Al said, the IB is great preparation for anything you want to do next. And our students really do go on and do anything. And we're very passionate that um, we support them to find the best fit for them, for their interests, for their future career ideas. Um, and that any subject that they are passionate about is a route that we will support them to follow. Whether that's in business and finance or politics and economics, which our globally minded students do tend to enjoy, or architecture or media and communications or medicine or continuing on a broader liberal arts and science degree where they can continue to study in an interdisciplinary way with multiple subjects. So how do we support our students? Well, we work with our pre-IB students, we start with them. Um, and our pre-IB students have careers lessons, they access our higher education fair and workshops, they have a special careers days just for them twice in a year. Um, and they can also access one-to-one -one guidance. And our support is really focused on helping them think about their next steps, understanding um, the study options that are available to them and the employment and exploring careers, career ideas. And we partner with a number of people to help us do that for them. And when you move on to our IB programme, we support students right from the beginning of the September that they join us in IB1. We have, uh, they have workshops, they have independent tasks, and they have whole year group classes as part of the Core Plus programme, sitting alongside the CAS content. 
And we start from first principles in what is careers, what it might the labour market look like in 10 years or 20 years time. Um, Self-awareness, understanding themselves, thinking about universities and university fit and their own priorities, exploring the subjects in an academic way to think about their interests. Through really understanding the different countries, through understanding how to research and into how to make competitive applications and how to make those decisions, we cover CVs as well. And then we move into supporting them with our application process. All students on campus can access our hired education fair, which happens each October. Um, last year, we had 120 different universities attending. It, we did run it virtually. Uh, normally, we have quite a large number of those on campus. And we had students from over uh, students. We had universities and institutions from over 20 different countries, as well as gap year providers. We also have external speakers who join us um, either at lunchtime or after class, and we provide additional one-to-one, -one, uh, additional specialist support for those students, particularly looking for um, applying to Oxford and Cambridge or to medicine. And they have a specialist uh, tutor who works with them for an hour's lesson once a week from January of their first year. And obviously they're free to come and see us one-to-one -one as often as they want to. A large part of our work is done through our careers engagement platform, which is a bespoke platform we've built to work with our students and our parents. There is a parent zone on there for you to access information, a blog with opportunities for everybody to access resources, editorials um, and a, a zone for our alumni. And we support our alumni for up to three years after they graduate to ensure that they still have the support to progress on after their gap year plans to their, their university. Once we move into IB2, we transition to really the focus being very much on one-to-one -one work with students, supporting their individual applications for their individual deadlines. They do join us again for the higher education fair and alongside meeting institutions, there is a seminar programme in both years um, with sessions designed for both our, for our pre-IB students, for our IB1 and our IB2 students. And then once they have their offers and they've done their, um, done their final exams and they, they leave us, we are still here to support them over the results period and over their gap year as well. So that's a rundown of how careers work. We are very much um, country and subject agnostic and we, we work to support each student individually. So now I'm going to pass over to Ellen Hess, who is our Vice Principal Pastoral, to talk about the ways in which her team support our students. Thank you, Mel, and welcome to everybody. As Andy has said today, our pastoral care is outstanding. And it is because every member of our community, students and staff, contribute to its nurturing environment. Nurturing environment in which our students live and study. When you meet our students, you find them highly engaging in any conversation uh, that, that you might want to, to have. Uh, they'll be oozing with inner confidence. They'll be polite, uh, well-spoken, open-minded, very proud of their cultural heritage, um, and they'll have very strong moral compass. So uh, as Mel said, once they go to university, you know, they are self-assured young people ready to embrace all the opportunities ahead of them. So how do we do it? So our pastoral care uh, stands on two pillars. One is relationships and the other one is healthy lifestyle. Relationships matter in our community. Uh, they are meaningful, uh, they are based on trust, cooperation and mutual support. Uh, so when we look at those relationships closer, uh, we see that personal tutors, for example, uh, is, is the most, one of the most important uh, relationship that we can have, uh, students will have together with relationship that they'll have with their house parents. So their personal tutor will have a very small uh, group of tutees, maximum of 12, uh, six IB1 students and six IB2 students. And the same number will be for, for pre-IBs with a different uh, tutor who really is focused on pre-IBs only. Uh, because of small groups, uh, personal tutor is able to monitor academic uh, progress uh, and, and address any issues that uh, students might have. This, uh, we have tri-weekly 
reports or tracking reports that teachers, um, um, it serves as a kind of communication between a teacher's personal tutor and student about their progress, highlights their uh, learning behaviors and where they are, what they need to improve, which skills that they need to uh, have. Uh, we'll tell them at which grade they, they operate. And personal tutor with students can discuss this on a regular basis. So students know along the way where they are. And personal tutors with their expertise can provide guidance and will monitor how they are, uh, you know, uh, progressing with their aims or action, action plan there. House parents, they are, uh, act in local parentis. They are in boarding houses after school and at weekends. And again, that's that additional support that our students have in boarding houses. Uh, partial care is, is uh, you know, continuous pretty much throughout the whole day. Uh, throughout the day, it is with teachers and personal tutors and after school evenings and weekends with house parents. House parents would see quite a lot because our students go out, uh, they, they do work commitments, uh, the school commitments, they, uh, they might be homesick uh, or they might struggle with some friendships and house parents have that time to discuss it with them and to support them and actually notice that something might not be uh, um, you know, okay in their, their life. Uh, they'll also be there to support when uh, they celebrate successes. Subject teachers have a very affirmative approach uh, in the classroom. They're extremely passionate and knowledgeable, and they encourage students to do well. They also spot uh, any, any problems the students might have, and they communicate it promptly to students, personal tutors, and, and house parents so that appropriate support can be put in place. Another important relationship that uh, students will have while at St. Clair's is with the, the pastoral leads, myself and uh, assistant principal pastoral, Emily Woodinson as well, uh, where we'll just make sure that every student has the right support in place. And if the support, if we need to put an enhanced support in place, then we'll put it in place. So we monitor uh, the situation very, very carefully and adjust as we need to. Uh, also, we have uh, our college nurse and college counselor who provide uh, extra support uh, with medical needs, but also with, with emotional needs. And two other relationships that are not uh, mentioned in, in this slide, but are fundamental are relationships that our students will develop with their peers, because they will be the first immediate uh, support network that they will have. And also the relationship that they have with their parents and the parents have with us. We work in partnership to make sure that our students are well supported. I've also mentioned that the, uh, the pastoral case uh, is a stance on a healthy lifestyle pillar. And again, we don't look at healthy lifestyle just in terms of that students need to uh, go for a run or to the gym and, and eat healthily. We look at it holistically. So we make sure, uh, for example, technological health, that our students are competent users of um, information technology, but also that they can use it safely. Uh, global health, uh, we just make sure that our students engage with uh, important issues, um, global issues like home, um, homelessness, social justice, cultural sensitivities. Uh, they, they are supporting, for example, currently students uh, from our local community where uh, people from our local community come to our school for tuition and our students support them. We also engage with uh, topics like sustainability and eco-friendly uh, living. Uh, future health, I think Melanie is really the, uh, and her department, the, the main contributor to this uh, future health together with personal tutors and house parents and parents 
because they, we are making sure that our students are really well equipped when they are um, uh, well equipped for the future, whatever their aims are. Study health, again, study health, we make sure that our students have a wide range of study skills. Uh, we provide library support, uh, personal tutor, again, uh, looks at the, the workload that our students have and how they are managing it. And after the discussion with students, students adjust uh, their, their either revision timetable or look at how they study, what time they study, and that they strike the right balance. At the moment, we are also looking how to improve self-management. So it all contributes to, to our students' study health. And physical health, you know, CAS provides a wide range of, of activities that our students can engage with, whether it's, uh, you know, team sports or gym, running club. Uh, we also make sure that our students are aware of the importance of sleep uh, um, and they develop healthy sleeping regime. We've uh, done extension on our kitchen and dining facilities so that we can provide a better variety of food uh, so they eat healthily. And the final part of our um, uh, healthy lifestyle uh, approach at St. Clair's is emotional health. So we teach students how to recognize their emotions and how to, to work with it constructively. Uh, and I've already mentioned school counsel, college counselor that is for free, our nurse and, and the whole community that supports our students with their emotional health. Uh, you can just look at the list of initiatives that, that we've done um, over the years um, uh, that would be addressing um, various aspects of our global health. But also I have to say that our CAS program is really designed to address all of it. It is very varied. And uh, the, the final uh, part I'd like to talk about boarding. And so we have about 12 uh, boarding houses. Each boarding house got a house parent and uh, students are mixed in each house. Pre-ID houses are separate uh, because they are younger students and they need a bit of more structure and different support is required for pre-IB students. But IB1 and IB2 students are mixed. We make sure that each house has got a good representation of nationality, that there's a good, good mix uh, and, and ages, uh, as, as I said. We would have double or triple rooms and single rooms as well. Some rooms are en suite, some rooms are not. However, if the rooms are not en suite, there's enough bathroom facilities within the, the house that student can, can use the bathroom without queuing. Uh, so there are no issues with that. Uh, in IB1 students, um, we allocate roommates just to make sure that they don't share a room with somebody who can speak their language or who is from the same country because that mixing is, is very important uh, and learning about other cultures. In IB2, students can choose their roommate. We are very different from other boarding schools because our rules are uh, more relaxed, I would say, and we operate on trust. So our students, when they have free time, they can decide whether they go back into their room and study or they go to the library or they go to Summertown, they go to the Oxford City or do sports. It's about that self-management. So our students make these decisions, what they do. We don't have an allocated time when students can, can go out. They can go out anytime. And our curfew is 10.30 during the week. And on Friday and Saturday, it is midnight. And this is just to allow our students to still complete their class activities, do their work commitments, and still, still have enough time to go out and enjoy social aspect uh, of uh, St. Clair's. And I think we've, we've, I've covered everything, so I'll pass everything. I'll uh, now invite Olivia to talk. Uh, Hi.
Thank you. Um, so I'm Olivia. I am the admissions registrar for the IB. Um, and hopefully after those wonderful presentations, you're now wondering how to apply. Um, so what we would do is we would ask you to send your um, most recent score reports. For, so for the last two academic years, and we would um, review those. And uh, if, if we were happy, we would then invite you um, to come and visit us for an interview and have placement tests in maths and English. Um, so the interview currently can be done in campus, on, uh, in person or online. Um, at the moment, there's a really good mix as to what students are opting to do with that. Um, in terms of what we're looking for with regards to um, the reports, we're not highly selective, but we're also not non-selective. Uh, so we do need to make sure that students will be happy and successful at St. Clair's. Um, and also with regards to subject choices, interviewers will take you through and give advice on subject choices during the interview. Uh, we also offer um, a really good range of scholarships. Uh, we currently have uh, two rounds, one for boarding and one for day. Um, the current boarding round, the deadline is very rapidly approaching. So that's actually um, this coming Friday, the 28th of January. So if you do wish to apply to this, if you haven't um, done so already, please do send through your school reports and go to admit the admissions email, which was on the previous slide, um, and can also be found on our website as soon as possible. Um, the process, uh, the beginning process is similar. Um, so reports will be assessed and if successful, we will ask applicants to complete a further two forms. These both must also be completed by the January 28th deadline. So please do make sure that you send your reports through as soon as possible so you can get that entire process done before the deadline. Um, we offer up to two full fee awards um, every year and we offer a number of partial awards as well. They are all means tested, um, just so it makes sure that all awards are given fairly. Um, and I think that that's everything from me. So I will now pass you over to two of our current students, Toby and Teresa, um, and we will also answer any of your questions as well. So if you do have any questions, just pop them for, for any of us, just do pop them in the chat or in the Q&A um, and we'll go through those. Okay, so Toby and Teresa, if you could please introduce yourselves and let, um, let us, uh, everyone know what you're studying and what a typical day at St. Clair's looks like for you. Hi everyone, I'm Toby, as Olivia said. Uh, I am an IB1 student. I'm from Argentina, but I'm not a board at my day student. I, I also did the private course last year and my current subjects are HL History, HL Biology, HL English B, and SL Spanish Literature. SL ESS and SL Math. So as I said, I am a day student. So well, every day I wake up and go to school, I usually go before nine to have the opportunity to have breakfast as day students also have the same opportunity as boarders to have breakfast, uh, lunch and dinner in school. Then while well, I have my classes and after classes, I finish more or less at 4 p.m. And I don't go straight uh, to school at, after classes at all. I, I, all, I usually always stay late for various reasons. Firstly, to keep socializing with my friends and having fun. And also, I, when I have homework or I have to study, I usually stay uh, at the library because I think it's a really uh, good uh, work environment. So yeah, I go to uh, I come back to home a bit uh, late, but not, uh, not never just after classes uh, finish. Hello, so I'm Teresa, I'm from Slovakia and I am an IB1 student, I am a boarder and my higher subjects are biology, chemistry and psychology and my standard level subjects are um, English, uh, Latin language and literature, then Spanish, Abinitio and math. And for me, my uh, usual day is that um, while I live very close to the dining hall, I can wake up very late because we start school at nine. So I wake up around um, 8.15. Then I go to breakfast, I um, study, uh, I go to my lessons. After lessons, I like to go uh, to the gym while we have a membership there so I like to use it and then um, I go to dinner with my friends I socialize and afterwards if I have to study I go to the library or I study in my room uh, I hang out with my roommates or I go to the city center because um, Oxford is a really nice place
Okay, fantastic. Thank you both very, very much. Um, so as I said, uh, we will also do um, question and answers. Um, so we do have um, a question at the moment that I'm going to hand over to Mel. Um, so uh, Mel, do we also um, offer Italian as a language in literature? We do. I actually meant to click type to answer, so I apologise. But yes, we do teach um, Italian as a literature along with, um, I'm sure Al can join me, I think we have over uh, 20 languages that we're happy and we're able to teach as literature from um, first, first, language, first speakers of that as a first language. Fabulous. OK, uh, so another question from Sarah. Um, so on the 5th of March, if we pass the first stage, will we be both tested and interviewed on the same day? I'm assuming that this is for scholarships, as a scholarship day um, would be on the 5th of March. Um, so yes, if you pass the shortlisting for the first part of the application, um, you will have uh, both testing and the interviews all on that one day. Um, and we would give more information about how that will look and how that will work um, once we've done the shortlisting. Um, so um, perhaps starting with, with, with you, Toby, um, it's, a, it's a very um, international community we've got here. We've got 40 different nationalities. So what, what are your experiences of how that, how that works and, and what that's like in, in both in, in your lessons and, and socially? Yeah, definitely. One, I think one of the most important traits of San Carlos is it is its internationality. And while, while that was definitely one of the reasons I came to the school, I find it extremely useful in all types of circumstances. In any class, in, in any class, for example, if we have a debate, uh, we know that if we come from different backgrounds, we can have a different perspective. So I think that if we are always constantly facing these maybe maybe clashing perspectives. Uh, we will definitely bro broaden our mind and we become more open-minded people and yeah, also in activities and it's not only classes or when you're socializing you're uh, talking to a person that is from an, a part of from another part of the world you, you, those conversations are always enriching thanks so and, and Teresa have you, have you got any sort of uh, things you'd like to sort of add about that perhaps from a boarding perspective it is very nice to live with people who are from different countries. Maybe in the beginning, it's kind of uh, trying to find the middle ground. So for example, if they're used to going to bed uh, later than you, um, you, usually there is no problem to find the uh, middle point where you both like um, find a way how to um, find the balance, you know? And when you find it, it's really nice because you always have um, friends around you. You can speak to them about anything. They support you, you support them. Also, if you have problems uh, in your academic life, um, there is always someone who can help you. Thanks, thanks, Teresa. Uh, there's a question that sort of came in in, in the chat there about, about CAS and, and uh, it, the range of activities. Uh, perhaps rather than giving a great big long list, of everything that's available. Perhaps I could ask the two of you to tell us a bit about your CAS activities, why you chose them and what you've got out of them. So Tris, do you want, do you want to go first on that one? Yeah, okay. So for my creativity, I do post files. Uh, sorry, for service. It's post files, which I basically uh, create um, gifts for people who have disabilities and uh, we try to make uh, them um, kind of make their day brighter by sending them gifts. For example, we um, there are information about them. For example, their favorite color animal, and we um, create drawings. We draw. We make fra friendship bracelets so they feel um, warm and they have a very nice feeling when we send them this um, present. For my service, I do uh, mess, uh, for my creativity. I do medsock uh, where we. Um, gather all people who want to go to medicine in the future. We talk about different options. We talk about different um, perspectives of medicine. What you can do when you uh, well when you go uh, graduate from IB, where we would like to apply, and then what specialties we would like to be in, and maybe what the risks. Also, uh, also it's student led so my friend uh, she's the president and she also invites uh, interesting speakers as um, students from medical schools or even doctors to speak to us and tell us more about the environment and what their roles are so we can actually see how it really is and if we would like to do that in the future and for my activity I do badminton 
and it's really great because you find new friends not only from your uh, year but also from uh, uh, older uh, students peers and um, for example today we have a badminton match from with a different school so yeah lovely thanks Teresa and, and Toby what, what about you can you tell us a bit about your CAS program and what, what's involved there or so what I do for creativity is MUN, which stands for Model United Nations. So each uh, student gets assigned a country. And we debate a topic of global significance. Um, yeah, and so we have the five P5 countries, which are the most important ones, and then the, the rest get another, con another countries, but they are really important because they are involved in the conflict. And the topics we, di we discuss can be of uh, any global significance so for example right now we're we're discussing uh, the thing of russia and ukraine then for activity i uh, take gym sessions which the name explains what it is every tuesday at 6 p.m at 5 p.m i have to go to the gym and then my service uh, is um homework support so uh, kids from different schools come to our school and we basically help them with their homework and their schoolwork and I think that both uh, all of these three experiences uh, are really enriching. Lovely, thanks, Toby. That's, that's really nice. They're both re really nice balanced cast programs that, that you've you've got there. Um, perhaps um, again, a slightly different angle I could take. Um, St Clair's, um, in, in in some ways, I think feels more like a college than a school. Uh, could you could you make any sort of comments about the sort of relationships that that you as students have with the staff and the, the nature of those relationships? So um, I would say that everybody is very open to speak to you and help you in any way. For example, personal teachers, they help you in all sorts of way. If you have personal problems, if you have relationship problems with your maybe friends or um, also in academic problems, they don't mind talking to you. They actually are very happy to help you. And also if you um, come to any different teacher, for support, even if it's not about their subject, but you just need to ask a question, um, they are very likely to help you and very glad that they can help you. And um, I think that everybody is very wel welcome here and um, nobody feels that they're pushed away. Yeah, also I want to add that the, the atmosphere is extremely friendly. And although we have to do a lot of hard work, uh, the the relationship with our teachers is quite informal. So yeah, I mean, every time you have a question, they will be delighted to to answer to them. And it's really important to always uh, know that it's not a bad idea to ask a question. And yeah, I mean, the, the, the trust that we have between students and staff is really good. And that, of course, encourages a good learning environment. Lovely. Uh, thank you both. Um, thinking just about the classroom, another question that might, might come up. Um, I, I think the style of learning that's done in the IB diploma is often a bit different to what uh, people are used to. And I don't know whether you found that when you, you, you came towards IB. I, I mean, how would you how would you describe how the learning takes place in class within your diploma? Perhaps we could come to you first, Toby. Yes, yeah, so something very special about St. Clair's is the class sizes. So for my, the average class size of my subjects are, is more or less 10 people uh, compared to 30 in my old school. So I, I think I really benefit, uh, we all benefit from this because we can have a targeted support by our teachers and collaboration between peers, I think is also much more effective. So yeah, the, the, I think the IB diploma um, is, is, is a really comprehensive one where you don't have to, for example, narrow to three choices as, as in A level. Uh, because the number is so little that maybe you have to miss out of a subject that you really would like to take. So in IV, you have six subjects, and as Al described in his presentation, the program is quite flexible. Uh, you can really shape the program you want uh, for it to be more compatible with your uh, likes and dislikes or your uh, university aspirations. And yeah, the, the IV diploma makes it... Uh, takes all subjects into account and you can have um, relationships within them. What you learn in a subject, you can really take them to others. 
Yeah, and for me, from coming from an environment where I used to be in a classroom of 20 people and in every subject I had with the same people, I actually only knew my class. So it's very nice to have um, different uh, classmates in every subject. You can get, you, know, you then have more kind of friends. And um, also, I think it's great that uh, when you, there is a small classroom, you can have more open conversations and uh, everybody's voice is heard. You can say whatever you want, nobody judges you, even if you're uh, wrong in answering something, nobody is like um, telling you that um, it's the wrong answer. They just help you to improve for um, next, um, next questions. And uh, also, for example, in chemistry, it's not like that we only learn and um, study what we have to. For example, now we are doing plastics. So our teacher suggested if we want to do um, a debate, a small debate for banning and against banning plastics. And it was really, really interesting to do it this way. Lovely, thank you. Um uh, what I would like to do is that there's, there's one more question I'd like to ask. There, there are a few questions coming into the Q&A that are perhaps more suitable for um, us as the staff to answer than the students. So perhaps once we've done this question, I can hand back to Olivia and, and there are a few questions that, that are kind of coming in that maybe she'd just like, like to deal with that are to do with things like the mechanisms of scholarship and whatnot. I think they're, they're perhaps not ones that we ought to throw at our, throw at our students. So, I mean, my, my, last, my last question for, for the, for the, uh, the two of you. Um, obviously, you're in the in both in IB1, you're sort of in the early uh, stage uh, now of, of thinking about what might be next. C could you talk about um, the work that you've perhaps done um, with regard to careers within Core Plus to sort of help you sort of, you know, think about the things that you might want to do next? So for me, in the beginning, I had a problem with my subjects, not really a problem, but I was contemplating if to stick with my choice of doing psychology at higher level. So I came to Mel and Helen and they uh, really helped me to decide if to stick with it or not. And actually they did a great job because they told me to stick, it, stick with it and try to explore it more. And actually now I love it. So I'm really grateful that I had the support. Also during Core Plus lessons, we had, for example, the latest one was about CVs which um, I find very useful because um, not even for uh, university you need it, but also if you want to uh, find work experience or volunteering job, it's really nice to have this support. Yeah, so for me as well, the career support was really big. I think that what, that is another of, more, of the most special things I was encouraged that the career support is, is really enormous. We do a lot of things uh, practically every uh, every week or twice or every two weeks and they don't only help you about uh, what you do what you must do for your applications or for your future plans they really help you i think one of the most important things that is really discovering what you want to do so although i'm leaning towards some areas of what i want to do i'm still in that process but for example mel can can say the truth that i i, I had a lot of meetings with her trying to to find my interests and this this has been really helpful and she always gives me tips on on what to do in my way forward and connecting to what Teresa said and something that was in the QA chat about uh, subjects and university although you start with six subjects uh, you don't have to stick with them uh, mandatory for in the yeah. first half term you still have the chance to change them so you can get a taste in the first few weeks and if you think that they that you don't like them or they are not a good fit to your university plans, you can still change them. So whatever decision you make at, at the beginning is not necessarily the one that you will stay with until the end of IB. Lovely. Um, thank you both. Well, um, I hope, I hope those um, sort of questions and answers from our students have given you a bit of a flavour of life here. I, I always have to say that when, when I hear our students talk, I almost sit there in awe. I wish I had been that articulate and sort of, you know, able to talk about things as, as, at their age, I, I really do. Um, Toby and Teresa, thank, thank, thank you so much for, for taking part. Can I just hand, hand back to Olivia for a minute, because there are a few questions that have come into the chat that, that, that you might just want to deal with about the mechanisms of things. Of course, thank you. Um, so there are a couple of questions about um, how uh, students apply, what age, um, and about scholarships. So I'm just going to cover those really quickly, and then the other questions that have come up, I'll pass over um, to uh, my colleagues. 
Um, so regarding the age that students should be to apply for the IB diploma, um, so generally students would be um, around the age of 16 um, and ideally, well, you should have um, two years of pre-university education left um, from the September entry point that you want to start. Um, that, that's, that's pretty important um, that you have that. So um, if you are 17 and you still have those two years left, that's absolutely fine. If you're coming up 18 and you still have those two years left, again, that's fine. Um, but that, that's generally the age um, that our students would be when they start with this. As I said, it can, it can fluctuate, but really it's about how many years of pre-university education that you would have left. Um, with regards to scholarships, um, the scholarship assessment um, this year will probably be split between being um, some, uh, some of it will most likely be remote and some of it will be in person. Um, so there is that opportunity there if you aren't able to travel because of the current situation, um, we will be making um, allowances for that. So please don't let that put you off um, applying, please do apply. Um, and uh, so with regards to the percentage of scholarships and how large they will be. So as I said earlier, um, we offer up to two full scholarships a year and then a number of partial awards. We don't have a set amount as to what these partial awards would be. They, they are dependent on um, the number of applicants that we have in a particular year and also um, the quality of those applicants. Um, we want to obviously do what we can um, to help as many students as possible so it really depends as I said we don't have a set amount I'm afraid. Um, with regards to what will make up scholarship day um, so once the first deadline has passed as I said students would be assessed and then if you're shortlisted to attend scholarship day um, it will be a full day um, so as part of that you would take part in three interviews um, it would also be two written tests one in maths and one in English um, and there will also be a group exercise as well um, exactly how that will um, flow on the day will be communicated um, once we get to the shortlisting part um, but that's the general idea as to, to what the day will entail um, um, with regards to the academic requirements to enter, so for both um, scholarship and for our normal application procedure, as I said earlier, um, we're not a non-selective school, but we're also not highly selective. Um, so we, we wouldn't expect all of our students to be getting A star grades, um, but we would be looking at them getting um, a good grades, especially if you're a scholarship applicant, you do need to kind of have a slightly um, higher level um, but as I said we're not we're not um, a super super selective schools we're not like some other schools um, so uh, please as I said please do send through your reports if you would like to apply either for a full fee paying place or for a scholarship. Okay and I'm now going to hand you over to Mel because I can see that she's um, said that uh, she's going to answer some questions um, so Mel one of them I think really actually maybe Toby and Teresa have covered this um, but just to clarify um, do you get a chance to change your subject choices if they aren't what you expected um, and also um, if you decide how do you decide as an agent whether you can uh, do the IB or A level? Absolutely. So uh, Theresa and Toby did a brilliant job of answering the can you change? Yes, there, there is a process to do that initially, although in your interview, you will work with your interviewer to hopefully come up with the, the programme that is going to fit for you. And if you are unsure about your choices, you are able to um, arrange a meeting with one of the careers team prior to joining us um, as part of your inter application process so that we can support you to be on the right mix of subjects for you. Um, in terms of uh, whether, you know, if you're uh, talking to students who are thinking about applying, the, the student who you should be talking to about an IB. There isn't just one type of student, but I would say um, one of the things all our students have in common is that they're students who want to learn, they want to challenge themselves, they want to explore, they want to be more globally minded and more open minded. Um, they, they want to challenge themselves and they have that desire to become more resilient and desire to grow and develop as a person. And I think no matter what their subject interests are, no matter actually whether they're somebody who has been at the top of the class or the middle of the class, whether they are better at exam or coursework, IB will give them um, that whole rounded educational experience. If they're a student who enjoys learning, enjoys discovery and enjoys um, giving themselves new opportunities, not just academically, but also to develop as a whole person, to develop through living in an international community um, and to develop through our CAS programme. 
those are the kind of students to talk to about IB. Equally, those students who love so many subjects that they're not ready to give things up yet, and actually they enjoy understanding the, the grey areas between them and how they interact with each other. Those are absolutely the kind of students who should be thinking about the IB. I'm not sure I had, there were many others to me, but I think, Olivia, there's a couple that are asking around the number of students that we have on campus and the number of applications we usually receive in a year. If I pass back to you. Yeah, of course. Thank you, Mel. Um, so um, for Ellen, um, we have a couple of questions with regards to boarding. So if I could just pass those over to you. Um, so the first one is um, how many students are in boarding and what's the split between boarding and day students? And then uh, we also have a question about what do weekend days in boarding look like? Yeah, thank you, Olivia. So I think we have over 200 boarders and around 40 uh, day students. Uh, during any, any academic year. And most of our boarders are actually full-time boarders. So it is not the case that on Friday, as students leave and there's hardly anyone over the weekend. Our weekends are really busy. Students stay on the campus. There's no formal program for them over the weekend for IB1s and IB2s, because as I said, it's about that self-management where students decide whether they want to uh, catch up on their work or they want to exercise, they want to socialize or they just want to sleep in a, a longer. So it's really up to them. And that's that preparation for university. Um, uh, Pre-IB students or pre-IB boarders, it's a bit different because they are younger. So they would have an evening, Friday evening activity uh, from 7.30 to 9.30. And also they would have an outing every Saturday. So they would go to London or Brighton. They would uh, visit, you know, Christmas market. They would uh, do team building activities offside. And it's really to give them an opportunity to get to know the UK better. Excellent. Um, I think probably ladies and gentlemen, uh, will draw things to a close there. Um, I think we've had excellent uh, answering the questions uh, from the students, as Alice said, uh, and also thank you to my colleagues who've done a really good job. There may be one or two stray questions there we haven't answered live, but um, we'll do our best to answer those to you directly, if that's okay, some sort of rather technical things about scholarships and so on. I would point out that the 5th of March is the day on which the uh, scholarships are, the examinations and the assessment happens. The deadline is in fact in about a week's time. So if you're thinking of applying for a scholarship, you need to get on with it, to be absolutely blunt. Thank you very much indeed to all participants. Thank you to you for attending this and I wish you the very best uh, for the future. And I hope that we've uh, stimulated your interest in St. Clair's. Thanks very much indeed, goodbye. <laughs>